Extracellular epidermal growth factor, EGF, binds to epidermal growth factor receptor, EGFR. EGFR autophosphorylates itself seven times per subunit. The growth factor receptor bound adapter protein, GRB2, binds to the EGFR. GRB2 has three binding domains, 1, SH2, and 2, SH3. The former will bind to a phosphotyrosine on the EGFR. SH3 will bind to a guanine nucleotide exchange factor known as SOS, or son of sevenless. SOS then causes the inactive RAS GDP membrane lipoprotein to eject GDP. Because the cytoplasm has a ratio of 10 GTP per GDP, GTP will bind to RAS following the release of GDP. GTP is bound by RAF, an example of a MAP3K, a dual specificity protein kinase that has the ability to phosphorylate serine and threonine residues in addition to tyrosine residues. RAF phosphorylates a second dual specificity kinase, MEC, also known as MAP2 kinase, twice. The phosphorylation of both the threonine and tyrosine residues is necessary for MEC to become completely activated. MEC phosphorylates two extracellular signal-regulated kinases, ERK1 and ERK2, shown here simply as ERK. ERK can phosphorylate cytoplasmic substrates and can also travel to the nucleus to phosphorylate multiple transcription factors. One of these transcription factors is known as MIC. Activated ERK migrates through nuclear pores into the nucleus, where it phosphorylates the transcription factor MIC. Finally, activated MIC binds to the promoter of the cyclin D gene, affecting cell cycle progression and ultimately causing proliferation. Suppressor proteins can halt tumor genesis by preventing upstream oncogenes from maintaining active states. Here, NF1 facilitates RAS's intrinsic GTPase activity by removing a phosphate from bound GTP and thereby inactivating it. The phosphatase PP2A operates downstream of RAS, inhibiting MEC and ERK by removing bound phosphates.